Bits and pieces. Determine which of the following problems can be computed in worst case polynomial time, i.e. O of little n to the k. If you think it can be done in poly time, give an algorithm for it, and if you think it can't be done in poly time, give a proof for why. Before we go into the problems, let's take a look at what's really meant here by O of little n to the k. So k, of course, is a constant, but this little n here really specifically refers to little n, the number of bits of the input not to be mixed up with big N, the value of the input. A lot of times, especially in other classes, we often are referring to this N when we do O of N calculations. But for this problem, we are explicitly referring to the number of bits in the input. So the relationship between big N and little n is that big N is equal to two to the little n, or equivalently, little n is equal to log of big N. With that out of the way, let's get into the problems. So problem one, given an input positive integer N, output n factorial. So take a moment, pause here, and see if you can either give a polytime algorithm or prove that it cannot be done in polytime. Okay, the answer is no, this cannot be done in polytime. This is because simply printing out the number n factorial takes log n factorial time. For any number x, x has log x bits. So because this number has log n factorial bits, this is how long it would take to output the number, not even including the time it would take to calculate the factorial. From here, we know from the textbook that log n factorial is an O of n log n. Plugging in what we know, the relationship between big n and little n, we know that this is exponential. At this point, a common point of confusion is that you might have come up with an algorithm, probably something that looks like this, and intuitively it feels like a linear time algorithm because you've got this linear loop that keeps multiplying to calculate the factorial. But remember, this is linear in big N, and we are looking in terms of little n. So the reason this algorithm doesn't work is because it actually is exponential in terms of little n, in terms of the number of bits that the input n is. All right, let's move on to problem two. Given an input positive integer n, output true if n is equal to m factorial for some positive integer m. So let's do some examples to see what this problem is asking. If we plugged in for n, say the number 720, this should output true because 720 is equal to six factorial. If we plugged in some other number like 894, we should get false. This is because seven factorial is over 5,000 and six factorial is 720. So 894 is not gonna be the factorial of any positive integer. Okay, take a moment and pause here and determine whether or not you think such an algorithm could be done in polytime or if any such algorithm has to be done in over polytime. Turns out the answer is yes, you can come up with a polytime algorithm for this. Let's walk through it. So this algorithm takes an n as input. It sets two variables, m and x equal to one. While x is less than n, we're going to increment m by one, multiply x by m. And after we're done running this loop at the very end, if x is equal to n, we return true, and otherwise we return false. So let's step through the examples using this algorithm so we can see how it works. So for this example, we have m and x, they both start off at one. Then we increment m, we multiply x, increment m, multiply x, increment m, multiply x. At this point, you should see what we're essentially doing is we're incrementally multiplying x and calculating what m factorial is at each iteration. And then we keep doing these iterations until we hit what n is, in this case, 720, and then we would return true. Let's try the false example. It starts off pretty much the same, but we have one more iteration where m equals seven, and x is equal to 5,040. And at this point, we reach the else case and we return false. Okay, so now we know that this algorithm works, but let's check that it's actually polytime. In order to determine the runtime of this, the main step we have to look into is how many times does this loop run? How many iterations does it take? So at what point does x become greater than or equal to n and we exit the loop? Well, we can see in this loop, the only time x changes is when we multiply it by m. Specifically, each time we multiply, we know that we're being multiplied by at least two, because the first time we multiply, we multiply by two, and then m only increases from then on. If we keep multiplying a number by two and doubling it over and over and over again, how long until it's greater than or equal to big N? Well, that would be at most log base two of big N iterations. This is actually a pretty crude bound because we're not just multiplying by two, we're actually multiplying by a bigger and bigger and bigger number each time, which only gets us faster out of this loop. So this crude bound is actually still gonna be okay for us because remember log of big N is just little n. So it turns out that this loop 
is within O of little n time. And the work done inside of the loop, incrementing m and doing this multiplication, can all be done within O of little n squared time. So overall, this algorithm is just O of little n cubed, which is polytime, and we're all set. Awesome, let's move on to problem three. Given an input positive integer n, output true of n is equal to m squared for some positive integer m. So all we changed for part three from part two is we went from m factorial to m squared. So a good starting point might be let's just take the algorithm we had from part two and switch out that one line where we're calculating the factorial and instead calculate the square. So this algorithm is going to work and return true and false in the correct cases. The question is, is this algorithm still polytime? Well, when we do the analysis of the loop here, we notice it's going to be a little bit different. Last time, we analyzed how this loop was going to terminate by checking how x was getting multiplied by m over and over and over again. But here, we aren't building upon the previous x's, because you can't really build on squares the same way you build on factorials. So how many iterations is this going to take? Well, it's going to take root of big N iterations. And this is pretty bad, because when we plug in the relationship between big N and little n, this would end up with exponential time in terms of little n. But note that this doesn't actually prove that the, this problem cannot be solved in polytime. It just tells us that we might need a different strategy. So this algorithm doesn't work, but we don't know. There might be a better one out there. So pause, take a moment, and think if you can come up with a better strategy. OK, hopefully you've paused and come up with some good ideas and insights. In particular, you might have noticed that all this algorithm is is a linear search for the particular m that when squared would equal n. But you might remember from previous classes, particularly 122, that we have a big improvement to linear search, binary search. So let's just modify this linear search algorithm and turn it into a binary search one. So remember, binary search works by essentially just halving the search space each time. And now we know that the number of iterations is going to take is going to be log base 2 of big n iterations, which is O of little n, so linear time in terms of the number of bits. The work done inside of the loop is just done to recalculate m, to square m, and to compare it with n. All of this can be done within O of little n squared. So in total, by doing binary search to search for the correct m, it only takes O of little n cubed time, which is polytime. And that's it for all three problems.